Hey guys, Gordon here from GCreate. So hopefully you checked out the first five videos in the series uh, where we took the GCreate rocket, we showed you how we 3D modeled it, how we sliced it, and then how we eventually printed it. So it was a lot of fun for that series. Uh, we have one more bonus video which we want to show you right now. So if you want to see yet another new rocket in spiral vase mode, stay tuned. So here we are. We finished our previous rocket, which was the coin bank, and now we have a new rocket for you. So we went ahead and took the original rocket, um, obviously made it to the coin bank, but we also made it to a third rocket, which we could use in spiral vase mode. Now you might ask, what is spiral vase mode? Well, first, let's go ahead and open up the rocket. So I have that for you right here. And there it is. So this rocket is a little bit different than the rest. It was designed to be solid. Uh, which is useful for the mode we're going to use, but also we tried to uh, simplify some of the overhangs and some of the, uh, the separate parts. So it all prints as one model, it, uh, just like before it needs no support, but because you'll see that the uh, fins here are connected, it's uh, a little bit easier and uh, simpler to print because of the not, need or not needing support. So I can go ahead and turn on wireframe mode here. You can see it's basically the same core rocket. Uh, the outer three uh, kind of rocket cones here are also the same, but we connected it with these fins. So you see these kind of thin fins here connecting the main rocket. Now, this is a solid manifold model. Now what we can do is go to edit process settings, just like before. I'm not going to spend too much time on the slicing of this, but I want to show you this new mode because it's a very useful way to print things very quick and in very high detail. So if you go to layer, just like before, there's a setting called Single Outline Corkscrew Printing Mode, which is vase mode, or in other terms, in other programs, they call it spiral vase mode. If you turn that on, now what this does is makes it so the outside perimeter will print one continuous line and also raise the Z at the same time. So it never stops and then lifts up. Instead, it'll just continuously print higher and higher and higher. This means your outer perimeter and your outer shell will be very clean and it prints in a lot of cases very quick but your model might be weaker because there's only one perimeter so when you turn this function on all of these other settings essentially will be overridden uh, top and bottom solid layers will still be active so you still can have a bottom solid uh, base or layer and also top solid layers but um, your perimeter shells will be overridden with a number one because it's just one outside shell uh, you still will have a skirt and brim if you want and then you still will have, um, your info will be gone because it couldn't do info while it's trying to do the perimeter. So let's go ahead and just turn that mode on, hit OK. Now if we go to prepare to print, it'll basically tell you everything that's going to be overridden. Do you want to you want to continue? You say yes. And the slicing should be fairly quick, so there you go. Now this entire rocket from before, which was, you know, it could go as high as 10, 12, 14 hours, depending on your settings, now is only 4 hours, and it uses a lot less plastic. So you'll see as we scroll down, the really cool thing is there's just one quick perimeter all the way around, all the way to the bottom. In this current situation, we have the bottom turned on still, so it'll still do a bottom, bottom solid layer, just like normal, but then it'll continuously just print around and around and around, all the way up. And we'll go ahead and speed it up. So there's two things to know with this type of, uh, this type of printing. One, it only works on solid objects that have one single continuous uh, perimeter. So let's say in the case of the coin bank, it wouldn't work because the inside is hollow. So it has an outside perimeter, plus it has separate cones or separate uh, parts uh, of the model that are detached, uh, lower portions anyway, from the center. So it has to have one continuous perimeter that it can follow all the way up. So, yeah, as I mentioned, the, so the inside of the other one is hollow, so it would be two perimeters, you know, one inside, one outside but also at the lower portions, it would try and print here and here in separate passes. They're not connected. So it has to have one continuous solid perimeter, which is why this model was made specifically for this mode. Um, two, uh, as I mentioned, you're, it's a little bit more difficult to print. Uh, it'll print quicker and with a lot less plastic, but it is a little bit more challenging. Now, why do I say it's more challenging? Um, it's more challenging because you really only have one shot at the outside to make it look great. So if you have any sort of extreme overhangs or you have spots in your model, which have holes or, or, as I mentioned, are too difficult as an overhang, you might get a gap, and then that might just screw up that entire layer, and then you're basically done, because there's no infill, there's nothing else that'll keep it together. So this is somewhat of a challenging print. It's great for very tall objects that are very, 
have a very continuous vertical wall or very low slopes. Uh, this model is kind of pushing Spiral Vase to its limit, but um, yeah, so anyway, it's a great mode. Uh, we didn't want to go too much into the settings because essentially everything else is the same, but uh, we went ahead and took this model and we went a little larger because <laughs> it's so quick to print it and it's, it's such a cool mode, uh, why not? So what we did was, um, which is another function I want to show you in Simplify 3D, is you can save factory files. So if you go to save factory file as, what that'll do is save all the settings you have set up right now and the 3D model as one file. So if you ever bring it back in, you'll save all the settings you had and it'll bring in the model. So you don't have to worry about saving G-code files, remembering certain settings. Factory files are great and you should use them for a lot of your models, um, if not all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a factory file that we already had created for this rocket, which is a bit larger. Here is the factory file for the new rocket. It's a bit larger. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's 253% scale. Uh, that was just the right size to <laughs> fit inside of the print volume of the GMAX 1.5 XT+. Plus. Uh, but we also decided we're going to cut the top off, so we'll just stop the rocket when it gets to just about the top part, and then we're going to print the top separately, because we wanted to go as big as possible with this. So, just like before, our, our settings are pretty simpler or simple. We actually went, we did a 200 micron layer height, which is pretty fine for something so large. Um, I set it so there's zero bottom layers and zero top layers, because I didn't want to have the bottom full, I want to have it hollow. But also, I set so that there's a skirt, there's actually 10 skirts, with zero offset from the part. This is very useful because what this will do is build up a nice thick base for the first layer to print on, and then it'll continue printing up. Uh, otherwise, all you would have is very, one extremely thin outside wall for the first layer, and chances are this, this print would not make it to the end because it would probably peel up on one of these extremities or something would happen. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that we pushed the rocket as far back as we kind of could here uh, because we tried fitting our GoPro camera on the front corner here. Uh, that worked out somewhat well. Uh, it turns out the rocket was too big. <laughs> it was massive. It's a really cool print. So we did a time lapse, but of course, of course it only captured about half of it. But uh, in any case, we'll, we'll show you that time lapse. We'll show you the printing here. Um, let's go ahead and hit prepare to print. It takes a little bit longer for this one. Not that long, but a little bit longer because uh, it's that much bigger. And here it is. This is a massive rocket. Uh, in the end, because, again, just like before, it's hollow. It's just this massive hollow rocket. You can see it's just one continuous perimeter going all the way around. And then here's all the skirt layers I talked about. They're attached to the model, and it'll build up a real nice base all the way around the print. It's easy to peel off, and it just makes sure that your print won't knock off. Now, another really cool thing about this mode is you'll notice it says 18 hours and 27 minutes. For anyone who knows large format printing, that is extremely fast. Something the size that's hot or that's solid would take at least 30, 40, possibly 50 hours. So an 18 hour print is amazing. And in the end, it actually was 17 hours and 11 minutes. So it actually was quicker than what's shown here. So that's, and that's without speeding it up. So sometimes this number is a little off. Um, it also only used 337 grams of filament, which again, is only one third of a spool. So a really, really cool print really quick. And, uh, so yeah, we hope uh, you, we hope that you enjoy this, uh, or at least you enjoyed <laughs> learning about this print. The file is available now on Thingiverse, so I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description so where you can find it, as well as uh, hopefully I'll put a box here where you can click to get the uh, to get the model. So uh, sit back and enjoy the time lapse. All right, so unfortunately we have no music for the time lapse because it's so quick, but you'll you'll see it looks fantastic. Uh, but uh, we only were able to record half of it because the rest of the other half is off the screen. But uh, the time lapse turned out great, uh, aside from the uh, little problem there. It was a very high quality. Um, here we have a shot of us taking the print off the printer bed, um, which came off very easily. You know, the, the that skirt really held it in place just nicely, and, and it really came out great. So, uh, real quick mention, uh, we used Make Shaper PLA. Uh, this is the first time we've ever used it and they sent us a free spool just to try out and not even joking this is the first time we ever loaded it in the printer ever the first print not even testing and it turned out perfectly as you'll see here so get some make shaper it's great stuff made in the usa in uh, north carolina if i remember and great stuff and here you see the quality is just phenomenal again this is the first print this wasn't like the tenth print and we tried tried and tried so 
came out great. Uh, here's the um, the skirt section that I was mentioning, where it's very easy to take it off, but yet it really helps that print to stick to the print bed. So easy, easy way to you know make sure your print stays flat. Uh, but again, the the print quality is phenomenal. There was one little blemish in the back. I I guess it was a uh, I'm not sure some little hiccup with uh, the filament. But uh, other aside from that, the G logo looks great. Everything came out wonderfully. Um, one continuous print, you know, with the spiral base mode. Uh, these holes here in the top are what I was mentioning earlier, where if there's too steep of an overhang, it might have a hole. It didn't really affect the print. Uh, there's kind of one little line in the top portion. So that's, as a model maker, that's my fault. But aside from that, uh, really printed wonderfully. And same with the top. We printed the top separately. We actually gave it a bottom. Uh, the very top didn't like the extreme overhang. But aside from that, it's very solid. Uh, very clean print. This was also spiral vase. So, so really can't say enough about the filament. You know, <laughs> here you see us putting the <laughs> the top on, but can't say enough about the filament. Printed great. So, uh, you know, buy some of that and try this print for yourself. So that's it. That's it. That's all we have. <laughs> that's our our six part now series on how we design, printed, and sliced the uh, G Create rocket, as well as three of its I guess variants, if you want to call it that. So. Um, yeah, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed uh, watching the videos and saw how to uh, how at least we designed in 3D Studio Max. And hopefully you you enjoyed watching um, what you can do with it. So stay tuned for more videos. We hope to be printing a lot larger things a lot more often, as well as showing you how to use a printer and all the cool settings for it. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks everyone, and keep on printing. Everyone, and keep on printing.